Because it's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Sometimes you go over the top rope and you bang your head on the ring apron. That's when you feel like a big dope. And they're the worst bumps you can be taking. Whoa, it's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Sometimes you go over the top rope. And you know, I did that line already. It's something, 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 something. Now I think we're ready for double claps. It's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. But up, but up. Hey, they can't all be winners. What's going on, Bob Squad? How the heck are you? You crazy cats, you wild savages, you rabid dogs, you screaming Vikings, you filthy barbarians, frothing at the mouth, champing at the bed, drool dribbling down your chin, stacked on one another like hermit crabs, crawling out of a bucket. You're god damn champions. All right. Doing the thing. Oh, it's been a while. Okay. <laughs> um. Let's jump right into uh, NXT TakeOver in your house. This show is an homage to the, the not popular 90s uh, miniature pay-per-views called In Your House. There's a lot of 90s colors. They dug up uh, Todd Petting Zoo, who used to announce the things in the mid-90s there. And it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I want to mention a couple of things up top. Um... Uh, first of all, I thought this show was going to be as they as they have been for a good couple of years. They're they're 4 p.m. Eastern my time, uh, which is 7 p.m. Eastern in the in the eastern part of the U.S. The New York time zone that dominates the world, I guess. Um, this one, for whatever reason, started at five o'clock, uh, which I did not know, and so I sat through an extra hour of stuff, which I want to talk about. Uh, so it started at 5 o'clock my time, which would be 8 o'clock Eastern time, and the pre-show starts at 4.30. Pre-shows, um, they're not doing matches on pre-shows they haven't in a while, so it's just, uh, you know, catch up, here's some promos, here's some videos, here's this, that, and the other thing, and that's fine. Uh, it was a little bit of a bummer, because I had gone out and then I'd rushed home to make the thing on time, and oh, okay, sit here with my thumb on my ass for an hour, which is gross. Oh, uh, so I found this uh, this press conference thing they put up, I guess, yesterday. Of it had nine NXT superstars carrying cross without Scarlet, because that's fun. Raquel Gonzalez, Ember Moon, uh, Adam Cole, L.A. Knight, Cameron Grimes, Pete Dunne, Johnny Gargano, <laughs> and uh, Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, interviewed by Wade Barrett. Todd Petting Zoo shows up for a minute. And then he leaves, and Wade Barrett interviews the nine of them. And they ask these random questions, which are all from dirt sheets, which is really weird. These PW Insider and Bleacher Report kind of thingies. Um, but basically, the nine of them, for 40 minutes, they have to... I only watched the first half, because then it was time to watch the actual show. The nine of them had to uh, basically just cut many promos on the spot, more or less. And... No surprise here, Adam Cole and L.A. Knight and Cameron Grimes were, were all really good at it. Grimes stole this thing. He ran away with this thing. But Grimes, Knight, and Cole were really, really good. Uh, everybody else was all right. And Ember, uh, Raquel Gonzalez is very good. Uh, Ember Moon, ugh, oof. I went from being, like, not a fan to neutral to, uh, Yikes. There are some wrestlers, they always have the expression, well, and then the bell had to ring, meaning they have a great entrance, like the Ultimate Warrior, uh, and then a lot of flash and sizzle, and then the bell had to ring, and that means after the entrance, you don't need to see him anymore. Ember Moon's the opposite. You're just waiting for the bell to ring. Like, just please start the match, because any everything else you're doing is, is uh, yikes. Um, she answered one of the questions with no confidence, pretty much said she wasn't focused. She's hunched over. She's speaking in a normal monotone tone and it was long it was stuttering and it was rambling and it was like uncomfortable i think pete dunn fell asleep at one point during it no i'm exaggerating but because they're all sitting next to each other at at one time uh yikes and i mean we knew she wasn't going to win this thing but that was like hey why don't you just kill all hope why don't you but um anyway moving on to the actual show um uh, they have the old logos, because they used to have, like, it's purple and there's lightning and uh, something for 50, over 50 years in sports entertainment. I don't know what, what I don't know how many years it is now. Um, and then it says World Wrestling Entertainment instead of Federation at the bottom of it and that kind of stuff. 
And they have the old in your house uh, logos and some music and, and everything else, just to give you the warm and fuzzies for those kind of things, especially 95, 96, little 97, and then they kind of, the in your homes became a little more elaborate. Um, we start with some of the worst lip syncing they've ever done on wrestling TV. Oh my god, this lady named Naomi Fox came out to sing this in your house song, and they had to pan really, really. Uh, far wide on her, like really, because it was way off and it was bad, and uh, I don't know what was going on. It was like she was singing, but like I think the lyric track wasn't there, so she looked goofy. I really thought, I really, literally, I, I saw her looking to the right, like I thought she was literally about to walk off, but she stayed on there and they played this whole song. Um, they didn't play the In Your House song, the In Your House, bum, 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 bum. we're in your house tonight. They played some other thing, some 90s sounding thing. Um, but anyway, so I, I like, you know, I appreciate NXT trying to do the, the music and everything. And it's, it is good, though. It is a little bit different than just, uh, hey, let's play an even longer, uh, an even longer video package. And then like, OK, I get it. Let's uh, let's move it along. Uh, the Midget Street Crew is first. So this first contest is a six six they they a six man tag, the the uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering team, and Bronson Reed defend their North American and tag team titles against the three Evil Luchas at the same time. So the match is two titles are up for grabs here. Uh, my body has trained itself whenever it's watching NXT live. I found out the last two takeovers, my body's trained itself to fall asleep during the MSK's match and wake up right at the finish. And that's what I did here. I missed this whole thing. Um, I'm okay with that. The baby faces win. I, I, I woke up just in time to see Bronson Reed coming down on top of one of the Evil Lucha guys. And uh, one, two, three. Match gets uh, 16,000 stars. I didn't see it. And but the announcers had to say at the end that the the, the good guys won. Um, they had to use the word trio because now AEW is saying trio instead of six man tag because it's lucha. I'm like, eh. the six man. That's what we call it here. There's six of them. If there's six women, call it a six woman tag. In this case, it was a six man tag. Call it that. What is the issue? Yeah, sniffles. So the Midget Street Crew and Bronson Reed. So the tag team uh, titles and North American title remain the same. And then Todd Petting Zoo is backstage, and he made some kind of weird comment. He mentioned the old uh, uh, announcer, the woman that was with him for a little bit in 95, Stephanie Wine. He goes, yeah, we had terrible chemistry. Like, that's not nice. She was nice. It just didn't work, and re work on our wrestling platform, and neither did he, quite frankly. He just had a job longer. Anyway, leave the poor woman alone. Xylee! What the hell is that? Do you hear that? Oh, that's the assholes in the parking lot behind me. Oh, Jesus. Um, Xylee, sister of Zaya Brookside and daughter of Robbie Brookside. It's not true. Uh, wrestles Mercedes Martinez. And uh, Mercedes is much taller and bigger than her. Uh, but Zaya does beat her clean, which I was surprised because they uh, they went to the heat really quickly. Mercedes um, just like like Zai take over, and Zai had a leak is much shorter. She had to use some clever tactics like, you know, zipping around and pushing Mercedes into the ring post and stuff like that. And eventually did one of her big crazy kicks. Um, I'm not too surprised that she won the match, actually, because they put so much effort into her presentation and her entrance. So, uh, there's a big aftermath here. There's a big, uh, oh, the match gets, uh, uh, 14,781 stars. Please don't question the system. Um, uh, the big aftermath, Mercedes Martinez is, uh, Zylee tries to jump Mercedes after beating her for whatever reason. Mercedes is able to get a chair and take Zaya out with the chair a few times. And then Zaya, I mean, Mercedes challenges this creepy old lady in a in a her own wacky chair at the top of the ramp and the lady grabs mercedes in a tongue and death grip that that men used to do in wcw the, the former haku and then she tosses mercedes off of the the ramp they have a special ramp like the old clash of the champions so the ramp goes straight 
it's right on level with the ring apron, which is the hardest part of the ring, if you didn't know. Uh, and she just tosses her off the ramp and smacks into the plexiglass hockey barricade thingy. The Mercedes, yeah, that was a, a good-looking bump, you know? Mercedes is great. You know? You know? I sound like Bill Burr, you know? I'm, you know? It's terrific. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. Popular comedian. Not important right now. Uh, then they have a commercial for the COVID vaccine. I'm not kidding. Uh, Miz is on all these goddamn things. Stephanie McMahon is telling us to get the vaccine, and she can't wait to have live fans there again for more money. And then Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher are inside of an empty truck again, because that's where Ciampa has to cut all his promos. And they're very mad. They just call him GYV, the grizzled young veterans. And they're very mad at him, and they're going to fight him this week on NXT in a, in a Tornado Rules match um, where the you know, the winner of the, the team that wins uh, tears up the most trailer parks. So that should be interesting. Then we have the Million Dollar Ladder match. Oh, here we go. L.A. Knight and Cameron Grimes. Of course, Million Dollar Man enters first. Um, they have the gold ladder farthest from the ring, and they make a big presentation. They put the belt in a special see-through uh, glass case as opposed to a uh, glass case you can't see through and they hang it really freaking high too uh way up there at the top of this this warehouse um they're getting a little carried away with those so i was watching that thing i'm like are we are we can we take it down a hair jesus christ guys well they used to beat the bejesus out of out of each other unfortunately for the second half i nodded off again i was very tired um but here's what i liked about it i'm gonna rewatch it so I don't completely lay it down here. Uh, I do want to see it because I like LA Knight. And now I'm, I'm even bigger on Cameron Grimes than I was before after that press conference thing. Um, LA Knight especially did a really good job of making it look like we are struggling to get the ladder. We are not racing to get the ladder to cooperate with each other for crazy ladder spots. We are struggling to get the ladder. And a good two or three times he teased the violence of the ladder, the same way you would a cage, where he'd slam the ladder down over the top row past the ring apron, which is the hardest part of the ring, and Grimes would get out of the way, or he'd smash the ladder into the turnbuckles where Grimes was standing, Grimes would move. Um, they did a couple of those type of things to tease the violence of the ladder, the same way if you were in a cage, you would go, the first time someone gets rammed into the cage, they should probably put their hands up and not get rammed into the cage. You know, and build the anticipation, and they did. This is a long match. I think it went a half an hour at least. I'm gonna look it up again, but it was it was a long thing. So they made a realistic race as much as they could to get to the ladder. Once they and then they eventually they did some wacky ladder things, but not as many. I know Cameron climbed the weird scaffold thing and jumped onto LA Knight, but uh, it ended with LA uh, Grimes falling backwards off the giant ladder. Onto another ladder, which was bridged between a rope and and another ladder on the ring, on the ramp where the ring apron would be, which is the hardest part of the ring. And Grimes couldn't get up from that, and L.A. Knight climbed to the top, and he won the thing. And L.A. Knight is your new million dollar champion. He celebrated with Ted DiBiase. So, uh, very good. Grimes doesn't need the win, but I don't think L.A. could afford the, the loss on that. He needs to be taken seriously as a guy that's really hard to beat, and it should be special to beat him. Grimes, um, you know, we were yelling about this year's zombies so much. Wasn't Grime running away from zombies like last October now that I'm, I'm thinking about it? Did anyone else bring this up? I'm just thinking about it now. It yeah, wasn't Grimes running away from zombies and vampires or something? Like, well, Probably during one of those wacky theater Halloween Dexter Loomis thingies. Does that sound right? I, I think it sounds right to me. So, uh, I mean, Grimes is a guy you could probably beat all day long, and it doesn't matter. He's going to open his mouth, and he's going to keep getting over. And I, I legitimately think he cracked Raquel Gonzalez during a press conference when he was, uh, I forgot. He was, out of nowhere, Grimes just goofs on carrying Cross and says something about Cross looks like he got his suit from a thrift store. And Cross can't can't do anything about it, and Raquel starts cracking up. Um, so I think that um, he's growing on everyone, even people who didn't like him at first. <laughs> just... So Grimes did not need that victory, and he really doesn't need many victories to stay over. He's going to need a little bit here and there, but not much. The Hit Row idiots show up, and they 
bully Todd Petting Zoo and the, they flash money and the lady sings the song or just the name. She just sings the name of their thing and because Todd Petting Zoo. That's what the reason I call Petting Gill Petting Zoo is because Jerry Lawler used to call him that. I'm nostalgic too. Okay. Um. So they ruin Petting Zoo's thing. Then there's like a two second thing backstage with Karrion Cross and Pete Dunne being pulled apart backstage. I wonder if they're just going to set up a random singles match for uh, whenever. Maybe the Great American Bash themed show they're going to have in a few weeks. Ember Moon, oh, oh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. She shows up with a million gimmicks. She's got the uh, she she has her own wacky howl yell thing. And she has to do the hands over the waist thing. I'm going to win the title thing. Oh my god, is she imitating a wrestler? Holy crap. Just ring the bell already. That's that's the best part of Ember Moon. Wrestle the match. Yeah, I just I'm just not buying anything she's doing. Every time they got to her in that press conference, that panel thing, it was just one of them was particularly death, but they were all just so there was a weak link on that thing. I mean, good god. What happened? Anyway. Raquel, what the hell is that noise in the back? I think those assholes in a parking lot. Oh, I'll try, I'm going to try to. Right. Um, you know, I called the cops. I did the most old man thing I've done, like, ever. Like, two or three months ago. Like, they were just having some party in a parking lot. It's supposed to be a COVID-19 testing station, by the way. The parking lot that connects to my front door. And uh, those people were just blasting music, and I got home at like, like a like eleven eleven thirty on a Saturday, and I was just in a mood, so I just said, "Let me see what happens." So I just I just called the noise complaint number, or whatever. And then like a few minutes, it, it all vanished. I'm like, "That was awesome." Being old and cranky is the greatest thing ever. Um, okay, so Raquel Gonzalez and Ember Moon have this match, and um. Wasn't a bad match. Dakota or Kai is at ringside. Uh, I mean, the thing is, the outcome was so predictable, it was uh, hard to get into. But Dakota Kai uh, interferes. They actually protected Ember somewhat. Ember hits the big finish. I think tag matches are coming, folks, because I think you know what's coming. Uh, Ember hits her finish on Raquel. Dakota puts Raquel's foot on the rope for the two and a half. Shot sloppy Blackheart runs out with the green hair, and she... Rolls, she battles Dakota, fights her back up the ramp, which is the same height as the ring apron, which is the hardest part of the ring, and throws Dakota into the plants and the, the house setup for the inner house thing. So they go all the way backstage, and then uh, Ember does obviously doesn't get the pin on Raquel. They go, they trade a couple more moves. Raquel hits the big booby slam on uh, Ember, one, two, three, and uh, there we go. That's the end of that. Oh, this match gets. Um, 4,080 stars, and the million dollar ladder match thing gets uh, 3,016 stars. Again, please don't please don't question the system. Todd Petting Zoo is backstage again. And when they say someone's going to host the thing, it means we have a bunch of pre-taped skits that you, we're going to make you watch that don't mean anything or have any bearing on the show. The Petting Zoo, of course, this is a nostalgia thing. Um, he teases the Karate Fighter toys, which was... I think in 95, I think every In Your House was sponsored by Karate Fighters, and they had to have these long Karate Fighter tournaments. Uh, they're basically Rock'em Sock'em robots with little plastic ninja guys uh, at the end of them, more or less. And we had to watch these long segments with it. Like, the, every, the, the, the lower half of the roster had to participate in these things. And, uh, and like, Sonny would make it fun, or try to, and Lawler too, of course. And, but still, it was very silly. And the heels would lose and get all upset that they lost the toy fight. Like it was really dumb. But anyway, Todd Petting Zoo plays Dexter Loomis in the Karate Fighters, and he says to Loomis, so "How do ladies treat you?" And then Loomis stares at him and takes his Loomis takes Todd's toy off. Why am I recapping this? This is a this is a waste of everyone's time. Anyway, he scares Dexter scares off Todd Petting Zoo. There you go. That's what you need to know. It is time for the uh, the five way. The big main event, Karrion Cross defends against Johnny Gargamel, who terrorizes the Smurfs, and um, Pete Dunne, and Kyle O'Reilly, and Adam Cole. 
So the five of them were going to fight at the same time. And uh, they actually had more fans in the PC than ever before. They just kind of, um, uh, I guess, packed them in more. Or maybe people got vaccinated. Or it's Florida and they just don't care is really the... So whatever. So it was nice to have a little more noise. It was... Uh, it was, it was the first time, because Carrying Cross and Scarlet debuted to uh, to know people. So, and I think they had, and then gradually that CWC had people in it. But, um, I'm distracted by this way. You probably can't even hear it. But there's somebody just blasting music in the car and it's driving me bananas. I'm trying to stay focused. I'm sorry, guys. Anyway, the five of them, the five of them brawl, and for the first half of this, I am starting to nod off again. I'm st I stayed awake. I, didn't, I don't think I fell asleep, but I'm getting drowsy. They're trading their their pinfalls and yada yada yada. Um, when Gargano is on his way to the ring, uh, he stops and he just sees Dakota and some sloppy Blackheart being broken up by by William Regal, which is a precursor to what happens at the end. Anyway, finally Cole and Kyle reluctantly team to double power bomb. Carrying Cross, the big meathead champion, onto the announcer table, which does not break. And then it started getting good, and that's when everyone's hitting their finishes. And the, it's really the four of them without Cross are doing. It's not that Cross isn't good, but it's the four of those guys are doing what they do best. So they're trading all these false finishes and doing everyone's finish into everyone's finish. <laughs> Excuse me. It's hard to describe, but, but the action's getting completely bananas. And I was biting on a few of those false finishes. There's one in particular where I think Cole hit the uh, the Panama Sunrise, the flippy reverse pile driver off the thing, and before he went down to cover Gargamel, he uh, he completely walked around the other side of Gargamel and then made the cover strictly so one of the other guys can pull his leg out uh, outside the ring. And I was like, I kind of I rolled my eyes a bit, but considering the hard work, I mean that's a nitpick. That's something that you know a wrestler is going to notice. Uh, from my back in my day, it's just those goofy little things. I'm like, why you would never walk around the guy and cover him like that unless you needed this something to happen there. And I, that's that's the shame. A lot of the realism gets lost in these big three, four, five ways and those type of things. It's they'll do those kind of things and you get taken out of it. Nobody, thankfully, did a big stupid dive where the others stand around and wait for them and catch him. Thankfully, no one did that. They should all get credit for that. Um, Karrion Cross does win this thing. He's cho he chokes out Kyle O'Reilly, while Kyle O'Reilly almost has Adam Cole about to submit, which is a good finish and good storytelling, and I like Kyle, but, I mean, that was um, it's something for Kyle and Cole to argue about, as it, I don't think they're done having matches. And really, they built up Pete Dunn out of nowhere, because he was really the, the, the dark horse or whatever. He was really the odd man out, or the least uh, favorite to win this thing, and they really had... They had Pete and, and Cross, and I guess that explains why they were backstage for three seconds being broken up. Because, like I said, I think at that Great American Bash thing, I think there's going to be a reason to have Pete Dunne and Cross. And Cross needs to fight another heel. His next match it needs to be one. It needs to be versus a heel if we're going to establish him. Because it gets because he's he's lost in that sense too. So we need to reestablish we're supposed to be cheering for carrying Cross and Pete Dunne. And the, but the thing is, those fans love Pete Dunne. So who the hell knows? Those fans are idiots, too, the people they have, because they're, they're trying to do Virgil chants during uh, the Million Dollar Belt uh, pre-show when the Sam Roberts mentioned Virgil once had it, and then they, they go, like, they just try not to find If you're going to plant your own audience, maybe don't have stupid smart marks in there. Did I complain about this? This I definitely did, yeah. I, was, I forget what the reason was. <laughs> so they set up um, Carrying Cross, and, um, and Dunn, Dunn at one point hits his finish, on Cross, and he, he clearly had him beat, but somebody interrupted, and he had Cross look like he was about to pass out. He had Cross, he was giving him a guillotine thing with elbows to the head, like the referee was just about to call it, when, uh, I don't know, Kyle or Gar Gargamel, I'm going to call him that now, uh, just broke the thing up, and uh, that was that. So Cross, Ben Cross beat Kyle, Cross didn't be done, or... Or Johnny Gargano, which is so impossible for me to say now. I just wanted to see if I could say it. Uh, there you go. Karen Cross is the winner and still the champion. So our only new champion is the only ch championship we were guaranteed to have a new champion of, and that is our Million Dollar Champion, which is kind of a gimmick title, but it's it's a great launching point. And what? 
Oh, and they end the show. We have a blonde lady. You have to have a blonde lady talk to someone. She interviews William Regal on the outside uh, in the parking lot because all NXT business must be done in the parking lot. She actually started talking to him in the hallway in a, in a bright light. I'm not kidding. And he says, hold on. And he takes her outside into the parking lot because all NXT business must be handled in a parking lot for whatever reason. And he says, you know, seven years I've been here. It's, there's never been this much bedlam. He said bedlam because he's British. Oh, I love that fucking guy. And he says, I think it's, you know, it's never been this bad uh, under my, my reign, my rule. And uh, I just think uh, maybe it's time for a change. And he walks off as if he's about to resign from being the commissioner or GM or whatever the hell it is. I forget what it is. The guy in charge, the matchmaker, which is, I, I hope, hope not. Now people are going to speculate. It's not. I don't think they're going to do that to HBK. That's like having Ric Flair or the under who was who was a GM once in the early 2000s, or like having the Undertaker in charge is just kind of silly. Um, I think he's just too big a name. I don't think Edge is doing anything. Uh, maybe Samoa Joe, two-time NXT champion, and uh, bring him back in that kind of role. But it, it would still be preposterous. I'm not saying they won't do it. It would still be preposterous because Samoa Joe is uh still looks like he can kick the ass of pretty much anyone on the roster so it would be kind of preposterous but i don't know that's my best guess is samoa joe but edge might be something but then if beth is there but now they'll, they'll have they'll play with that they'll have fun with that i don't know uh, who knows Our edge being a gm is kind of like saying he's retired and i hope that's they wouldn't do that to him he, he has a yeah I, I hope he has one or two left but who knows but just something to think about. So I guess we'll find out. We'll have more answers this Tuesday. We'll have the, the tornado match between uh, Champa Thatcher and the grizzled young veterans. And everyone will have a good time. And they will try not to repeat uh, the verses when they sing the hardest part of the ring song. And they'll pretend they're not irritated by the loud music in the background. And they will go absolute bananas. All right. Uh, do the thing. Say the stuff. And everybody's got a price for the million dollar man.